Hi all, it's Mike speaking. Welcome to another episode of Creative Suite TV. This time we're going to be having a look at InDesign and print. So if you're a printer or you're a designer that needs to print things, or you're just a regular old InDesign user and you need to send things out to print, you need to check for a few things. Make sure your resolution's right, make sure the colour space is right, and a whole bunch of other stuff. This episode is dedicated for you so that you can get your artwork right. The first time we're going to have a look at the live pre-flight, the links panel, a whole bunch of really cool stuff that's absolutely necessary for you to get the job done right. The first time, welcome to Creative Suite TV. I hope you get something out of these tips that I've got for you. When we're setting up artwork in InDesign for print, there's a few common things that you need to take care of, uh, and we're going to look at um, a bunch of those things really quickly in InDesign CS4. First of all, the Pages panel. You'll have a look over here in the Pages panel, and one thing that you might need to recognise is which pages can contain uh, transparency. So you can see beside some of these spreads over here, there is a little icon that indicates, yep, those particular spreads, they contain transparency. So then you can look at those uh, particularly with the transparency flattener or the flattener preview if that's in fact what you need to do. And there's only certain instances where you do need to have the document flattened. For example, you're creating um, a PDF output and it needs to be PDF 1.3 compatible. So that's quite an old version of PDF. It's an unflattened, or it is a flattened version of um, a PDF file. And we can have a look at that a little bit later on. So that's important. Even before you get to that stage, though, it's very common that you need to make a bunch of last minute changes. And I just wanted to show you one little tip in here which is really great for navigating through a document. This is like a magazine layout, but navigating through a document to find um, certain changes that you need to make. Maybe it's been marked up or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on a little area here. And the shortcut that I'm going to use is just to use the space bar. And this is a common one. Hold the space bar key down and you can pan around the document like that. That's cool. You're probably saying, Mike, we know that one. But what about this? If I click and hold my mouse in, so I've got the space bar key down, now I've got the uh, mouse key in, it will zoom back out and give me this red like navigator type panel. And I can scroll through my document to find a particular area that I need to make a change. Okay, so let's say it's here. And I can even then use the up and down arrow keys to resize that zoom, position it, and then let it go and it will zoom into that certain area. So it's a very helpful way of navigating through a larger document. You know, maybe you need to make some changes or place some new images or something like that. Very easy to do, just holding the space bar key down. What we're really here for, though, is to make sure that all of our artwork is spick and span and looking pretty cool. So one of the things that we can do is use the links panel, the brand new links panel in CS4, to see, make sure that all of our placed images are all hunky-dory or cool, if you know what I mean. So how does it work? One of the cool things about this is that any linked images that are placed more than once here get listed under a little pop-out menu. So you bet only this um, placed or this linked illustrated document is on pages 3, 14 and 16 and you can go to them by simply clicking on that page number and going highlight it for you. So that, that's pretty cool. It'll also tell us that these linked Photoshop documents are all CMYK so that's useful as well. And then down the bottom here we can find out a lot more about it. So we can see uh, what the file size is, uh, what profile has been used for it and in many cases Photoshop documents in particular, you can see what the resolution is. The effective resolution and the uh, actual resolution. So effective is what it will output at and the actual is what the original is. You can see these match up, so that means this has been placed in at 100p. 
percent. If we'd like to have a look at what those resolutions are in this list format rather than having to select them individually, you can certainly do that. You just need to pop underneath this little pop out menu at the top and go to the panel options. And from here, we can then specify that we can view the effective pixels per inch and we can view the actual pixels per inch by showing a column in the panel. So if we go ahead and press OK, I'll just zoom out a little so you can see it, you'll notice that sure enough there are the two resolution fields. Okay, So the um, actual resolution and the effective resolution. And you can see here that this document has obviously been stretched because the horizontal and vertical resolutions don't match up. So it's been scaled disproportionately. So that might be uncool. You might want to go ahead and, and uh, fix that up. So at a glance you can tell uh, what's going on there. There are other ways though to see if your document's got problems. And what I'm talking about is the pre-flight panel. It's actually a live pre-flight panel. And um, we can see if our document's got errors. Uh, right down the bottom of screen there is a little button that indicates, um, yep, we've got one error. So we can we can um, track just about any type of problem that we might have with our particular document. Let me show you how to do it. I am going to bring out uh, the pre-flight panel, and I'm also going to bring out the profile panel because you might want to create your own profile of things to check against. We're most certainly not going to have a look at all of the options available in here, but we are going to create our own profile. You simply add the new button, and we're just going to call it Mike's Profile. This is the stuff that we're going to check against, so that's cool. And then we can get in and tick off a lot of this stuff, okay? Stuff that we need to check against. For example, our links modified or missing, standard issue, those ones. Color, um, for example, how many spot colors are we allowed to use? So we can say, okay, we're using one spot color and that could be a varnish or something like that, or no spot colors at all. So we can check to see things like, oh, has registration been applied? So sometimes people apply registration when they really mean to apply black and that can cause some issues as well. So you can turn that on or off. Under the images and objects, this is my favorite, we can check against different image resolutions. You simply turn this on and then you can check for both a minimum and a maximum resolution so that you know that nothing will be oversized so you don't get a real blowout in file size and then nothing's too small which is probably going to be the major uh, problem. Something that, something that designers hate is non-proportional scaling of place objects. So if something's been anamorphically scaled, we say, then that can have a stretched or skewed effect and not be um, uh, visually a desirable outcome. So you can check for those sorts of things. You can even check to see if there's bleed or trim hazards, minimum stroke weights, even moving on to things like um, particular size, minimum size uh, for fonts. Uh, one thing that's also great to check against is overset text. So if something has moved or pushed on, um, then please highlight or, or alert me to the fact that there are some overset text and we can go ahead and fix it. So that's kind of cool. You press OK, you make your own uh, profile, and then the pre-flight panel, you simply select your profile and then it will go ahead and check your document against all of that criteria. That's how it works. And then that way, you can come back and make corrections as you're putting the document together, rather than after the document's meant to be finished and miss your deadline. So here's how it works. We say we have one instance of overset text. It tells us it's on page two. So you go ahead and click that. It's a hyperlink. And then right down the bottom there, it shows us, OK, we've got a little red plus sign. How do we fix it? Well, in this case, we'll just make the box a little bit bigger. And there we've gone ahead and fixed up what could have been a terrible pro problem. And we're all sorted, ready to move on. Please do a little bit more exploring on the uh, live pre-flight panel. It's an extremely um, useful tool 
when you're setting things up for print and for press, whether it be electronic or offset. Thanks again for tuning in to Creative Suite TV, and we'll see you all again really soon.